So let's look at an example of how we could use the new uh, points um, feature within within Revit. So let's just pop over to Revit, and you can see here this uh, piece of sort of funny banana shape here, <coughs> and um, just to select it, and we're going to enable the X-ray mode so you can see a little bit clearer here. So we have a series of points, one, two, and three, uh, and then we have a line. Um, in this case, it's a reference line that ties these uh, three points together. And then hosted uh, to the line, we have a reference point, which you can see here. And associated with this reference point, I put a circle here. Uh, and this circle has a radial dimension. Um, the default here setting is two meters. But if we came up to types here, let's just start to manipulate the geometry here. Let's just change this, say, from two meters to four meters. And you see what happens. The, the shape itself um, sort of balloons out from the middle. But we also have a, a position parameter. And it's this actual line, uh, point is hosted on the line. And I've given the point itself a parameter. Um, the l you've got to consider the length of the line um, as one. Um, and if you wanted uh, this uh, hosted point to be in the middle uh, of the line, it needs to be uh, 0.5. Uh, so we can then move it up and down the line. So if we said actually it needs to be, let's say, 0.2 and apply, you can see how um, it's moved the point um, along the line, okay, and it's sort of ballooned it out at the bottom. Okay, let's just select this and we'll turn off the the x-ray mode let you to show you how we could go about creating this so you can see here I have three points in space okay if we go to reference okay and I'm going to go to spline in this case and I'm going to snap to these three points and then when I get to the end if I hit the escape key we now have um, a partial splined arc connected uh, between these three points if I now go back to create and I choose reference point, I can place a reference point actually on that reference line arc here. If I select it, you can see it's slightly, it's slightly different to the other points. It's A, a slightly smaller, and B, it actually has a plane associated to it. So if I select the point, I can select it and drag it along the line. Okay. So if I selected the... the um, point itself and I go to element properties and in instance properties you can see its hosted parameter is 0.7 it's just where I've dragged it at the moment what we're going to do is just select it and assign that position parameter uh, which is the same position parameter on the other object if I s say OK you can see it's moved to 0.2 its position along that line so what we're going to do now is we'll just add some more geometry. I'll go to reference, um, we'll choose circle, and let's just set the work plane to be this point here. And just draw a small circle. And then likewise, we'll pick this uh, point here and just draw a small circle here. What we're going to do now is set the work plane to be the hosted point, and we'll just sit and draw another circle. But this time, we'll select it and we'll choose the temporary dimension, we'll select that, turn it to a permanent dimension then select this and assign it the same radial parameter as this shape here so we'll select that and you can see how it's sort of um, increased in size and all we do then is we select holding the control key down we select the circles, we select the path itself and we say create form that builds our form. Let's go back and check it. If we go to types, um, obviously that radius looks a little big, so I'll make this say 0.5 and apply it. You see it reduces, and if we said actually it needs to be uh, maybe 0.45 along the line, um, and then maybe increase it in size, say 3 meters, and you can see just by doing this and moving the hosted position of this point you can very easily manipulate uh, and create um, some quite expressive forms here.